welcome to Engineers Workshop. Happy belated Father's Day. I'm actually recording this over Father's Day weekend, so that's why there was uh, no video for that weekend. But I do have a project to uh, work on today, and that is the hook wrench for the KT quill lock. Now, if you recall, I was going to make the hook wrenches on the KT because it was a perfect you know, uh, multiple curbs flowing into each other and I could use the rotary head to advantage, but I got such a ridiculous price on having these parts made by, um, you know, a, a mail order service. You send them a DXF file of the outline and they send you back the finished part. So I ended up making those parts from uh, Send, Cut, Send, but have the opportunity to use the KNT and put a round over on the outer edges of this on both sides, which will you know make it a little bit easier on the hand, and that's still doing almost as much work with the head and fixturing as making these things. So let me show you uh, how I'm going to set this up, and we'll get started on the KT. I originally set this up um, and put out all the dimensions of all the radii and the angles that I would have to swing, and then it dawned on me that uh, you know while I'm at it, I could make uh, two of these just as easily as I could make one. So I relayed it out with two of them on an array. And what did I have here as an offset? Um, I don't know, about three inches apart. But this would fit on a, I believe it was a six inch wide piece of aluminum stock that I had. And I can make two wrenches with essentially the same setup. But for rounding over the um, outer edges, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I have these two locating pins which I put in here and I'm going to lay these out essentially end to end now not at the same time but I'm going to make a fixture to do this part that leaves a common edge back here and then flipping it over I just have the additional coordinates of the outer end of the radius here um, but you know everything everything will be a mirror image for doing the um, radii on the back side of the part so that should be the easiest way to set up to uh, to do this so we'll take the existing part flip it and then uh, get both of these both of these sides taken care of for the fixture I'm going to use a cellulose based material some people call wood and I know what you're thinking you know this isn't a woodworking channel but this will fit in the 8 inch vise and I have a bit here, and this is a woodworking bit once again, but it has a half inch shank, and it's outstanding for surfacing. It's about two inches in diameter, and so I'm gonna put this in the K and T, um, walk this back and forth, get a nice clean surface, and then that surface will be parallel to the table bed itself, and I can index, put the uh, dowel holes in to hold the part, couple of holes to hold clamp dogs down and then I'll be able to walk that um, out, outer round over around and just flip the clamp dogs from one side to the other. Originally I was going to do a 1 8 inch round over but I decided on a 3 16 round over when I had a hard time finding bits with a half inch shank and then an 8 inch round over. So anyway this is a four flute high speed steel tool and it has a nose diameter of about 335. So I'm going to have to offset from the edge, you know, half of that distance, plus maybe five thousandths. And then uh, also I'm going to have to make sure that this height right here is just missing the surface of the um, of, of the part by about five thousandths. And this is what I'll put that round over on with. Got the KNT cranked up to about 3600 RPM. So I'm going to come down and take a pretty healthy cut here, maybe about an eighth inch deep, try to clean up most of these uh, drill marks. And got the table on its fastest speed. Since this is wood dust, I'm going to attempt to collect it with the um, shop vac as I go, so don't expect uh, too much conversation while we're, while we're working.
I guarantee you that's the flattest piece of wood in the world right now. Let's hurry up and finish up before it changes. Basically at this point I'm going to clamp this down, um, get these edges parallel to the travel, and then locate the holes and that'll be our, uh, this one's going to be the origin hole. Well, I've got uh, three zeros and a five thousandths, which I'm going to say is due to a not circular hole. This is laser cut. And I think there's some bumps. So I am within, I think, a couple thousandths of the true center of that hole, at least where that hole should be. It looks concentric. So I'm going to put this quarter inch hole at this location, step over, let's see how much that is, five inches, and put a second dowel at that location. <clears throat> got a pack of one inch um, a quarter inch by one inch McMaster dowels and those are going to hold the location for me Now I gotta <clears throat> change over to my So for my first cut, I want to do this back straight edge and then I want to roll right around to that point. So instead of having you know the center line of the head to be tracing that curve, I'm going to keep this, the axis of the, the head on this center between the holes offset my radius which is 0.625 plus the um, radius of the nose of the cutter 0.1675 plus 5 thousandths clearance total head offset of 0.7975 that way I could get the head oriented in the correct um, pointing in the correct direction walk the table across and when I hit that five inch point swing it around and then end up down here now I'm going to be doing the side with the hook on over here first so I'm actually going to be traveling like that Seven, nine, seven, five. So I'm going to have to push the knob, push the head forward to rotate around this end.
first thing I want to do is to get the height of this surface. And for that, I'm going to bring the knee up. Yep, and I'm just missing this back edge with the nose of the cutter. So I'm going to come off axis here with my Y, come down until I touch. Now the depth of my cutter is 280, so I'm going to come down 275 from that zero. Bring my Y back to zero. Bring this off the part. Now drop down 275, 100, 200, 75. And I'm going to lock the quill with my other wrench. I guess I would have had to make two, right? That's so we don't creep down as we're milling. Now we'll engage the cutter. And this is about uh, 2800 RPM and about 7 inches a minute feed. We're going to travel five inches until the, the X readout is at five inches. do with a little lubricant. Well, you can see it's doing what it's supposed to. It's chewing up a lot of material, and I don't know if that's just the cutter is not sharp or what. But what I have to do now is flip this clamp to the back side and then continue the cut up the front. Could try slowing the, the head down. Let's try slowing out, slowing down the head. Now I have to travel the table to 3.7 inches, which is the start of that radius. The next radius, which is an inside radius, I have to subtract the uh, nose of the cutter from that and then subtract again the clearance. So it's minus uh, 0.1675 minus 0 0.005, which gives us 1.3275. And then the coordinates of the uh, axis here are 3.7 and minus 2.125. I'm going to slow the cutter down again because we seem to get a better finish running at a lower RPM. It's probably very close to 1750. Now, if everything's perfect, this should just merge right into that cut and swing that radius and then come back out. Well, 
Looks pretty much like it just uh, was a continuation of the previous straight cut. Last one is going to be the trickiest one. You can see for this last radius that they've got the head offset quite a bit. The centers for this are uh, two and a half inches past the origin and one and one eighth inch um, back from the origin. Then this is the critical part. We have to stop this cut when the angle hits 229 and a half degrees. So I'll stop it just prior to that. And then, um, you know, I will, I will uh, creep up on it manually. So we're going to come back over here. And I'm going to have to set the depth of my cut. And this is going to be a climb cut. I guess I could plunge in. You know what I could do? I could plunge in and then... Uh, and then do it. Let's do it that way. Now we'll just walk off the end of the cut. So I will need to push the lever forward as I make this cut. Two twenty-nine and a half. My depth is two seventy-five. Looks like I can come in just a bit on the radius. like a pretty good blend. Now let's get the part flipped over and do the same operations on the other side. Okay, I'm going to bring my head back to zero and reset these so that um, that's my origin and then establish the center of that arc. My stopping point for this arc is 130 and a half degrees on the head. 130 and a half. Oops, I have to establish my depth of cut again. Repositioning for the inside radius at 3.7003 from the origin. Okay, all the coordinates are set for the inside radius, and since it's going to walk itself both in and out of the curve, I don't need to stop at any particular point. For the last cut before I flip this clamp, I, can, I have this offset for the last uh, radius, and that last offset is 0.7975. I can just bring the y-axis in until I'm touching, and then traverse along the X until I come back to zero and then since I've already have the head positioned at 180 degrees I can swing that 180 and end up over here. Ten thousandths from touching. Final cut, back straight away. Okay, they're straight off the mill. Um, I, it doesn't like the feeds and speeds that I've got. I think I need more bite and less RPM, but I am gonna clean this up with an orbital sander but it 
as far as following the profile and the transitions between straights and curves I'm pretty pleased with that so I'm going to do a light cleanup with the um, not the orbital sander uh, uh, oscillating sander and a porter speed block and let's see how it how it looks that'll make the finish more uniform that was 150 grit and that's a little coarse for my liking so I think I'm going to go up to a 220 and just hit all those uh, surfaces and edges again at 220 but that feels very nice Now, if you're wondering about this block, I'm going to use it to hopefully position the second wrench with the um, parallel in the groove and end up pretty much on the money on that hole. And with the second piece tight up against the stop, I'm just dropping a slightly smaller drill bit in through into the dowel holes. And I can tell as it registers on the bottom of that hole that it is pretty doggone concentric. So I think I'm going to go ahead and lock this down and then use my original coordinates to put the dowel holes through again on this piece I'm gonna try a lower RPM, see if that improves the finish. We were at about 1600, let's go down to like a thousand. We have to reestablish our cutter height. So I'm just dropping the knee until I get the uh, vernier on my quill on zero. Now I'm going to set my correct offset for this radius, which is 0.7975. Going to lock the slide so that it doesn't wander in and out during the cut. I'm going to swing it 180. Now the head is still on zero. Here's my zero. So what I'm going to do here is come down my 275, which is going to plunge into the part. I'll walk the radius and then go down the back side. Now I'm going to put it on the center of this big arc and swing that around, stopping at my uh, angle that I have to come to, which I have to look up. The big radius is 3.6725. One, two, three, point five. Point six, seven, two, five. When the head is in this orientation, my degree scale is 180 and it's decreasing. So I need to go 49 and a half degrees under 180. 130 and a half. 
you can see how far my head is offset that's almost at its four inch maximum Let's see if I can get you in real close for this now on the coordinates for the inside radius and I just need to walk this into the cut stop it at uh, 90 degrees and then continue with the X travel to the right Okay, for this cut, since I have the radius already set for this, I just need to come across to the coordinates of this center, which is 1.2995. Stop it, and then continue the motion with the head. It takes a little bit of thought to move the head around without having to change the cutter height. So it's a big offset for the this radius. Let me double check what that is. 3.6725. 3 of my Gibbs. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over to my starting angle and set my Y at 1.125 and then the X is two and a half. So we can uh, come over, engage the cutter, creep up on two and a half and then swing the, swing the arc. Well, I've also got to establish the correct angle. 49 and a half degrees from perpendicular. 10, 20, 30, 40. Forty-nine and a half. As I approach two and a half, I should be making contact. Zero. Bring Y back to zero. Okay, so now straight cut across to X of five inches, swing the head 180, and we're done. Well, overall, I'm um, quite pleased with that. I hit these again with uh, 320 
uh, sandpaper on the oscillating sander and it really didn't take much to blend the you know five thousandths I had that was a safety zone from the true tangent of that round over in both of these surfaces. Both of these have a little bit of a bow in them and I could tell that even from the you know ultra flat piece of wood that I machined because they would they would rock in one direction and, and not not rock there we go in the other um, and that affected the depth of the profile towards the end I didn't have them fully supported uh, I didn't have enough clamps to force these flat and that of course is going to change the depth of that profile but I'm going to try to pick the best one of these really I don't have a best one and send it off to my buddy Mark so that he can use it on his K&T. So I'm happy with the, the blends. All of these transitions came out well, you know, trusting where these coordinates were. The one thing I didn't get was I didn't get a good surface finish as I was machining these. So I, I couldn't find specific uh, instructions on FS Wizard for 5052 aluminum. So I don't know if it was just that alloy. Uh, it just seemed gummy. It was, it was pulling up the surface, maybe climb cutting would have been better. It was a high speed steel bit. Maybe it's just a cheap Chinese four flute mill. Um, too much uh, RPM, not enough feed rate. I don't know. Uh, maybe you guys can advise me because the, the you know suggestions for feed was just astronomical. It's you know, some CNC rate of 200 inches a minute or 400 inches a minute. Uh, and I can't, you know, I can't come close to that. So happy with the way they came out. Um, put one to service, uh, you know, immediately, and I'll get the other one in in the post from my buddy Mark. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the the one piece that I finished up, I'm going to send to my buddy Mark, who has supplied me with some uh, spare parts and coolant pump and air pump for the. Uh, k and rotary head mill, so I, I told him I'd make him one of those quill lock wrenches. He didn't have one. So I'm going to get that off into the mail for him. Um, I'm going to try to get some more projects lined up for next time. Uh, probably dealing with the Spitfire conversion. Uh, there's a whole bunch of accessory drive components that my son needs for the front end of that thing. And that'll keep me busy for a while, both on the lathe and uh, on the k and So. Until then, as always, stay safe, pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, and we'll see you next time on Engineer's Workshop. Thanks again.